Hi everyone! In today's video we're going to be taking another look at the Simply Cards and Paper Craft issue 207 and this was the Nautical Collection stamp set with the die. So I will pop a link to my previous video up in the corner but let's jump straight into today's card. So we're going to be making a square 15 by 15 centimetre card today. So I've got a piece of white cardstock and I'm going to be using this stencil, just one that I've had in my stash. And I thought this kind of looked like shells, so I thought it would go perfectly with um, this particular stamp set. So as you can see here, I'm just taping down my stencil with some purple low tack tape and then I'm just going to tape this onto my media mat just so it doesn't sort of move around too much. So the colours we're going to be blending with today, you can see here we're using the Distress Oxide, we've got Squeezed Lemonade, Fossilised Amber and Spiced Marmalade. So the previous card I made, I used sort of all blues, um, very much water seaside colours, but I wanted to go with a different colour palette today just to show you that you don't have to go with anything sort of too traditional. So I'm starting off with some really basic ink blending, so I'm not pressing too hard with my blending brush because I don't want to get uh, sort of that really harsh kind of colour. I want it to blend really nicely and be a really soft kind of background. But you can see I'm just going back and forth a little bit and then just picking at different spots where I want that colour to be. So super easy blending technique. Really quickly, our background comes together perfectly. And what you do get is these really nice sort of shadows and highlighted sections. And you'll be able to see that here when we remove our stencil. So this is always by far the best bit because then you get to see what it looks like. So I think this background is gonna work perfectly for today's card. As I was wiping the uh, leftover ink that was on top of this stencil, I actually decided that I wanted to use this as part of my card for today. So I ended up making another one of these because I actually need a bigger panel to cut from, but I'll just show you what you can do. So because the inks I've used are these Distress Oxides, it reacts with water. So all I'm going to do is spray some water on top of the ink, and I'm just going to put my piece of paper just into that and press down. And what that's going to do is imprint the sort of negative image back onto your cardstock and you get this really beautiful sort of soft um, watercolour look. And I think it's, it's a really fun technique to just have something a little bit different. So here is our stenciled background. So before we carry on, what I'm going to do is use this Distress Micro Glaze over the top of this background. And this works perfectly with the Distress Oxide products. So it's going to make this background waterproof. It's not going to smudge the ink. Um, it's not going to have any sort of residue or fade at all. So it's a really good product to kind of seal in your Distress Oxide backgrounds. So all you need to do is apply this product, so I'm using my finger just all over my background and then I'm going in with a clean paper towel just to rub off any sort of extra um, glaze that is on there and that's going to then seal our background perfectly. So this is definitely a product I would recommend if you do use Distress Oxides for your background. So what I'm going to do now is just um, matte and layer our background panel. And I'm going to mat that onto some brown cardstock. So this is like a uh, recycled craft paper. And I just thought that brown is going to work really nicely with those Distress Oxide colours that we've picked. So that is our background all finished. So now we can move on to some stamping. The main focal point of today's card is going to be this Lighthouse stamp. And I've got a panel you can see here that I've cut. I'm going to be stamping onto this panel and I'm going to be using this Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad because I find this really does give me that crisp image that I want um, sort of the first time I stamp it. So I don't have to use my stamping platform. I can use an acrylic block. I'm going to be stamping a second one of these images onto this sort of reversed stencil background that we created. So this isn't the exact one that I use on my card because I do need a bigger panel to be able to cut from. But I wanted to show you what it looked like and how I did it. So once again, I'm just inking up our stamp with that Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad. And I'm just going to be stamping this directly on top of this background. 
By using a background like this where we've kind of watered the ink down, um, it gives that really kind of a subtle background, but you can tell there's still that little bit of colour there. Um, and then by using that same stencil as our background, I think it just fits in perfectly. This is another really great way if you don't want to sit and colour your images in, you can do things like this, stenciling, obviously ink blends, and there's lots of other ways of getting colour onto your uh, projects without having to sit and colour them in. So you can see here, this is the other panel that I have done exactly the same, but it's much bigger, so I'm able to cut a bigger section from it. So you can see our card, we're going to put our panel to the left hand side, and I'm going to take a circle die, this is why I needed the bigger panel, to be able to then cut out a section of our lighthouse image. And what we're going to do is just match our circle die up with the image, our black and white image on our rectangle panel. And by having the different shapes, we're going to create a little bit of interest on the card but then we're also going to have a section of this black and white image that's going to have that piece of color in it and that's going to almost give us a little spotlight on that particular section of the image that's going to have that nice bit of color on it I'm not going to be matte and layering this circle because I want it to fit over the rectangle image perfectly. But to be able to give it that little bit of dimension just so it doesn't lie flat on the page, what I'm actually doing is just running all of the edges in this ink pad. So I'm using the Prism World of Colour and this is the Roasted Coffee. So this is a darker brown. Obviously we've used that quite light craft brown colour. Um, but this is a little bit darker just to help it stand out. And this is a really great alternative to matte and layering because it still makes it look like there is a matte and layer there. Now we've got our circle all complete, we can go ahead and start assembling our card together. So I'm just matte and layering our rectangle panel onto that same brown craft paper that we matte and layered our background onto. Once then we've got this panel adhered onto our background, we can go ahead and put our circle down. So what you want to be careful with is to make sure that you line this up perfectly. So pick a couple of spots that you are going to line up. So I'm using, for example, the edge of the cloud. I'm using the edge of the lighthouse. And of course, then um, those lines that are on the lighthouse as well. And once you've got that all lined up, then you can stick this down. I'm really loving how this card is coming together. I think using that brown craft paper with that sort of yellow and orange colour scheme, I think works perfectly. I really love this kind of highlighting one section of the image and sort of having those couple of different um, shapes in there together. I think this is working really well. And you can see on our circle, just that hint of brown. Yes, it's not a sort of a big section, like obviously we've got the matter layerings, um, but it does sort of work well to make you think that it's got a matte and layer. So the next thing we're going to do is stamp out a couple more of these smaller images and of course a sentiment. So I'm going to take a bunch of the shells um, and the uh, starfish and I'm going to stamp this onto this same sort of recycled brown craft paper and I'm just going to use this tuxedo black ink pad and then we're going to fussy cut around them so again inking onto colored cardstock is again another fantastic way of not having to color in your stamped images so with our stamped images, we're going to do some really basic fussy cutting. And I really love having this on the craft paper because it fits in perfectly with our card because that's what we've used to mat and layer. So it ties everything together. So I've also done a sentiment as well onto some white cardstock. And then I've matte and layered that again onto this brown craft paper. So you can see our finished layout for our card. I did stamp that rope as well, but I ended up not using it because I wasn't really sure sort of where to put it. So we're going to put one of these shells in the top left hand corner and that just kind of finish that section off nicely. And then I've got the starfish and the two other shells sort of on this bottom right hand side of um, our circle. And again, that's just going to kind of fit that really nicely onto the page and kind of anchor it down a little bit. You can also see our sentiment. So I didn't want to kind of cover too much of our background design. Um, I still wanted you to kind of be able to see it. That's why I sort of overlapped it onto our white um, panel as well, because it was a little bit of dead space there. So I didn't really sort of want to have too much white showing. And I wanted you to be able to see the stencil just a little bit more.
So all that's left to do for our card today is just um, matte and layer it again onto our blank card base. Like I said, this is a 15 by 15 centimeter square card. And I really love then finishing it off with that nice white border around it. So this is today's card all finished and I've really enjoyed using this multiple collection stamp set and I've loved creating sort of a really different kind of card. You will find links to the products that I've used in today's video down in the description box below. Some of them are affiliate links so if you are looking to buy that particular product if you just use that link that's on there it'll be no additional cost to yourselves but it does help support me as I get a little bit of commission. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. If you haven't done so already please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks very much for watching and happy crafting!